Welcome to the Los Angeles City Section Football Podcast. Connor Morissette and Alex Gar back for another year here in the LA City Section. Alex Narbon, last year front to back number one team. This year looks like they'll be great again, but a lot of teams to talk to. I'm excited about this season. I know you are as well. Yeah, can't wait to get started. We've talked to a lot of teams here early this summer. I've been at San Fernando for a lot of the summer talking to them. We'll get you a little bit of sneak peek talking about them. They're going to be up there in our top 10. But we're going to get to some Crenshaw, some Carson, a lot of teams that maybe they didn't finish the season exactly how they wanted, but they've really put a lot of work in here this summer. I'm excited to see where they go this year. Yeah, and remember last year in the city section for the first time ever, two state champions, Narbonne and Crenshaw. So they'll look to defend their titles this season. How are we going to do the show today? Just go through our preseason top 10, and then within the top 10 rankings, just talk about some players to watch, and then who the teams are playing in week one, who's on upset alert. All that good stuff. So at 10, we have San Pedro, a team from the Marine League. They returned Justin Bernal, their quarterback, Cameron Thomas, a wide receiver. They snuck into the Open Division last year. Look for them to be a fringe open, high D1 team again. Yeah, we were kind of high on them last year. We saw them creep up into our top five in some of those early top 10 polls. I think the key for San Pedro is to just play their brand of football because when you're, when you're in the Marine League, it's going to be really tough. Narbonne is pretty much going to lock that up pretty early on. But for San Pedro, it's about beating the other teams. You got to go out when you play Banning, bring your best stuff, beat that team. I think San Pedro, we can see them make some noise. And remember, the Marine League looks a little bit different this year with realignment. Banning, of course, still in there, San Pedro, Narbonne, but a little bit of switching, no more Washington prep in there. And schedule wise, San Pedro, they're playing North in the first week. So that's a Southern section team that San Pedro should have a chance against a uh, team from North Torrance. I think that's a toss-up. I don't really know too much about North Torrance, to be totally honest, but that's a game just on paper that San Pedro has a shot in, which is good to see. Well, we're going to see a lot of teams here in the city. Always when you start a football season, city teams play southern section teams. So you're going to have some really, really good competition. We're going to kind of break down some of these city versus southern matchups to see who we think has the best shot at taking down their southern section rival in week one. I think San Pedro versus North, that might be the game, but we've got Dorsey at nine. They're playing another really, really good team. You mentioned it, Alex, at number nine. Dorsey, the Doug Bledsoe era is upon us. Charles Mincy, he's out. Doug Bledsoe is in. I got a chance to speak with him at a seven-on-seven -seven tournament this summer. He says he's got a lot of under-the-radar guys, but the one thing that he was sure about, quarterback Isaiah Nelson, a wide receiver, uh, formerly at Dorsey now, he's going to be the quarterback for them. He's the guy under center, so we'll see how he goes. A little bit of an undersized guy, but in the trenches and in the secondary, I think Dorsey's going to be pretty good again. Yeah, we saw Dorsey last year get off to a really, really tough start because they scheduled some of the best opponents that they could schedule in the southern section. They even went down, they played Lincoln, a San Diego team. So Dorsey, they're not afraid to schedule the big opponents. I think this year, when you got Long Beach Poly, it's a week one matchup. Long Beach Poly is a very, very good team. And they're in our top 10 for our southern section poll. So they're going to be a really tough team to beat. But it's all about how you prepare, and it's about how you can execute these kind of matchups. Are they expected to win this game? No, they're not. But they're going to go out there, and they're going to play their best brand of football. Let's not forget, Dorsey was a Division I runner-up last year. They played San, San Fernando in the D1 title game. And while that result wasn't how they wanted, they fought all the way towards the end. They almost stole it from San Fernando. San Fernando looked like they kind of had it all the way there. But Dorsey, they, they mowed it all the way back, and they were right there. Could have taken it from them. So while they've got some tough opponents, we can see that they're clearly not afraid to schedule some of the best competition. I'm excited to see what they got this year. Last year, their best player was Charles Mincy Jr. He's transferred to a school in North Carolina, so they won't have him this year. Another guy I'm watching on Dorsey, Kendall Hill, linebacker, fullback for the Dons. Had a chance to speak with him at that 7-on-7 seven -seven tournament at Westlake that I mentioned earlier. Very impressive young man. I'm excited to see what he brings to the table. But Dorsey, they're not shying away from anyone. That Long Beach Poly game, that will be a tough oh, yeah. one for them. We'll see what happens. And as always, Dorsey Crenshaw is going to be a great game. At number eight, we have Banning. Jacob Garcia is back for them. And the big thing with Banning, their offensive line, they have some tanks there, some guys who be tough to move them in the trenches. I'm excited to see what Banning has. When you return your quarterback, it's always a good sign. Yeah, as a football team goes, it's usually pushed by your offensive linemen. If you have a really good offensive line and you have a consistent play up in the trenches like that, if the big boys can help move and kind of push that line of scrimmage, it's going to open up holes. Your quarterback's going to have time to throw. Your running backs are going to have a lot of running lanes. So a good offensive line, that's always a sign of a very, very healthy football team. Banning could make some noise. We were talking before we started recording about who we think could be a sleeper team, who could kind of take out a giant. Watch out for Banning sitting there at eight. That doesn't mean that we don't think they're a top five team yet. They they could really sneak up on some teams. I agree with you. Kevin Duran is the left tackle for them, and he's been 
getting visited by a whole bunch of college coaches. Today we're at Birmingham High School. They're number seven in our top ten. They return their quarterback as well, Jason Artiga. And a lot of talk this offseason, Alex, has been about the running back, DJ Banks. He was really great last year against Fairfax in a game in the open division playoffs that Fairfax ended up beating Birmingham in. But he returns, and I think he's going to have a huge impact. And, again, you return your quarterback in the city section. That is so, so big. It's not like southern section teams where quarterback goes and – Got another ringer right behind them. Right. This experience is really helpful for them, and I think Birmingham is going to be an open division team once again. Yeah, it's all about senior leadership. If you return your seniors and you return your coach, you start to kind of have a program. Guys can learn from those. And Birmingham, their new field right now is currently getting ripped up. They're putting in a new uh, facility over there on the football field. So kind of new beginnings here for Birmingham. They've been the number one team in the Valley for a long time. Birmingham's kind of lately they've been the best team here in the West Valley, but there's still there's still some things to prove because I think we saw last year San Fernando they kind of took that crown away they said you know what we're the team to beat in the valley right now so for Birmingham here's a shot you got your senior quarterback you got some really good leadership up there go out and, and reestablish yourself as the front runners and look for them to uh, give Harvard Westlake a good game in week one I think that's another game we mentioned the San Pedro matchup against North I think Birmingham has a great chance against Harvard Westlake at number six we have Fairfax a team who has a fantastic quarterback in Scott Harris. We saw what he can do last year. He's back for his senior year. Looks like he's going to walk on at USC, play for Coach Helton over there. But also, a few other guys I want to shout out. Andrew Cox is a great defensive back for them, and Kendrell Ross at linebacker is a beast. They have some players at Fairfax. I think they'll be in the open division again, too. Yeah, it's kind of a theme here so far on this podcast. Seniors returning. You bring back your quarterback. You still have the same coach. You have the program, the playbook. Scott Harris is really one of the best quarterbacks here in the city section. We talk a lot about Narbonne. But Harris, walking on at SC, that's not a gimme. Someone saw him, saw the body, saw the physique, saw he's able to throw downfield a long way. Really impressed with the skill set from him. Kids got tools. Fairfax, they're in really, really good hands. Like you said, they're going to schedule some really tough opponents. But when you got Harris at the helm, I think they're going to be OK. Yeah, and Harris, he also played at the Adidas 7-on-7 National Championships in Los Angeles. I was able to check those out. It was cool to see him there playing at the big stage. He said it was really a great experience for him. So he's a guy who's still kind of breaking out. He got that walk-on offer at USC. We'll see if any D1 schools pull the trigger on him and offer him scholarships. And maybe he'll change his mind. But he's certainly someone to watch there. They play Loyola in uh, week one. It's a big one. And that's going to be a, a tough game for them. But they have some guys, so we'll see what happens. At number five, Crenshaw. Who knows with Crenshaw? Coach Robert Garrett, he likes to keep a lot of stuff close to the vest, as most of us know. I uh, heard that Trent Bryson, their center, is playing well in camp, and Amir Muhammad is a good wide receiver for them. They're state champions, but remember, they lost a lot of guys. Yep. Amir Crowder, Washington State, he's gone. Solomon Hassan, great running back for them, he's gone. Isaiah Johnson, he's gone. Jarrett Greenfield, the player who was only a sophomore, he transferred to Bingham in Utah. He's out of the picture. So I don't know who really besides those two guys are, are going to be there for Crenshaw, but what I do know is that the Cougars, they're always in the mix at the end of the year in the L.A. City section. So we have them at five right now, right in the middle of the pack in that top ten. I think that's fair to start the year because there are a lot of question marks there, but I think they're going to be good. Yeah, state title winners a year ago. I think a lot of people were kind of chafed at the prospect of Crenshaw getting that bowl game bid. But they went out and showed that they're still one of the best teams here in the city section. New field for them as well, so that's yep, also, you that's know, true. you play on some nicer, nicer turf and, you know, that could kind of help things with Coach Garrett we still kind of got to see what field and what team he can kind of bring together here for week one. Crunchyroll is always going to be a good program, but the city section as a whole, they've kind of been bleeding. A lot of the good talent's been leaving. They've been transferring to the southern section. As public schools here, it's kind of tough to keep the talent where it is. Crenshaw, they've, they've been one of the tougher, you know, they've, they've been a victim of that kind of transfer process. So hopefully for Crenshaw, they still have a program there and, and they can, if nothing else, beat Dorsey. On the record, you mentioned uh, how they made the state bowl game last year just on the record my take with that I think if you're the runner-up in the open division you deserve the spot for uh, over the D1 winner because the D1 winner wasn't one of the best eight teams so the fact that people complained last year that San Fernando should have should have made state I, I understand it but it was really from the Dorsey people they yeah. were mad if they had won they would have wanted to make a state game but if you're not one of the best eight teams you, you don't belong in state so quickly uh sorry about that rant but that's I mean come on I think that's a yeah. gimme I, I don't really think that's that hot of a take. All right, at number four, Carson. Coach Arnold Ali, he lost a lot of good players as well, but 
kind of like Crenshaw, it's Carson. They're going to have some good players again. Jaja Bellinger, he's on the Max Preps roster, so I think he's going to be their quarterback. There was some talk, is he going to play, is he not? Looks like he will, so they return him at quarterback. That's big. Ja'Cory Moe, their big fullback, running back, hybrid. He's back. He's going to be a nightmare for city section defensive players. And then they have a transfer, Micah Gardner, who's a defensive back. I saw at some camps this summer. He impressed me. I think he's going to be a big part of what Carson does this year. They are at number four right now. Maybe they could squeak up uh, in front of the team we have above them, but I, I don't see them getting much higher than three. Yeah, Carson, the slogan for them last year and the last couple of years, make Carson great again. Carson kind of ran things in the city section for a period in the 80s and the 90s. So for them to kind of get back, Coach Ollie's done a really good job at building a program over there. They did lose a lot of talent last year, a lot of kids graduating, a lot of Division One teams or Division One players kind of moving on to the next level. But the key here for Carson, win the games that you can go out and win. Don't kick anything away. Because every game here in the city section, if you're trying to chase down a team like Narbonne, it's going to be really, really tough if you're shooting yourself in the foot and losing these close games. So the key here for Carson, go out, try to win week one. I mean, I know they play a really tough opponent, but go out and see what you can do in week one, and then just close the games. When you have that lead late in games, go out and close it. They're kind of a run-heavy team. They can run the ball, kind of chew up that clock. Go out, close these games, and try to close that gap between Narbonne. In week one, they play Milliken. That should be a, another 50-50 game. I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, Carson won. Wouldn't be surprised if Milliken won. We're going to learn a lot about uh, Carson in that first game, so I'm excited to see how that one plays out. At number three, Venice, and it could be Venice's coming out party this year. They made the Open Division a year ago, which was great. Bryson Tremaine was fantastic for them. They had a backup quarterback in there because Luca Diamant was banged up, but he will be back. Chad Johnson Jr. will be back, and he's going to have a much bigger role this year than he did last year as a sophomore. Makai Cope, a sophomore wide receiver, he's going to have a big role. They have some players at Venice. The question is, is there depth enough to keep them at number three throughout the year? Because their top line guys, maybe Narbonne only has better people than them, but I mean their personnel can match up with just about anyone. Well, the key for those guys, they're all juniors, except for Makai Cope, yep. who's even a sophomore. Yeah, a young team. Young, young team. Diamant's only a junior. Chad Johnson Jr. is also just going into his third year of high school. So if it's not this year, you still have next year. Diamant, Chad Johnson Jr., those guys, SEC schools are looking at those Yeah, kids. Diamant has an offer from Alabama. So they're clearly on the radar, and they're only 16, 17 years old. they got a whole nother year of football. Don't sleep on these guys. I, I was going to go and, and check out some of the stuff in the summertime, They've got a really good program over there, and it's kind of starting to come together. The depth will be an issue, as we saw on the sideline last year in some of the games. Didn't have a lot of guys yeah. besides the guys on the field. So a lot of guys playing two ways. Key here for Venice, just wait a year. Play your best football, continue to develop. If next year you get some more kids into the program, you kind of start building things. Diamant, he's going to have another senior year of football. They're going to be a really exciting team for the next two years. Yeah, and I agree. Next year they'll be good, but this year we have them number three. So we, we expect a lot of yeah. them from them as well. They should be firmly in the open division. I would like to see them get a semifinal game. I remember last year Narbonne obliterated Fairfax, and then in the other game, Crenshaw, Carson, Carson won, or Crenshaw won, excuse me, by a pretty good margin. But that was just a high level, good game of city section football that, that is going to stick with me for a while. I think Venice can get to that level, and I think they should be able to be in a semifinal game this year. I'm excited to see what they do. First game at St. Paul. We'll see how that goes, but should be a, a win for them. Let's, let's be honest, St. Paul isn't exactly a southern section threat. Do you agree? Yeah, I would say that they had trouble with them last year. Right. So this, this is going to be one of those redemption games. Of course, Diamant didn't play. This is where Diamant goes out and says, hey, man, this is my team. Yeah. This is where we are. We're going to start this season 1-0, and and then we're going to go into our tougher opponents. Watch, watch for a blowout in week one. Into the top two. So we kind of mentioned it earlier, but San Fernando is number two. They won the Division I playoffs last year, and you've, you're the San Fernando expert, Alex. You've been with them at camp a lot shooting your grind series. I'm really excited to see how that turns out. Everyone knows the Gill Twins. Kyle Bryan is back for them. They're, they're loaded. Yeah, for San Fernando, I've spent most of the summer out there with Coach Robert Garcia shooting a, a feature called L.A. Grind. It's going to be a multi-episode feature. Stay tuned for that. I've been a really, really had a good time shooting that stuff. But for San Fernando, they're returning 18 starters from last year on both sides of the ball. So there's a ton of kids coming back after winning a Division I title last year. I know for a fact these kids want open. They want that open division title. They want Narbonne. They want, they want every chance they can get to prove that, hey, Maybe we haven't been the biggest program for the longest time, but we're hungry, we're angry that we kind of got slided last year, you know, like you were mentioning, missing out on that bowl game. So there's a lot of fire and a ton of returners. We talked about Kyle Bryant, Nehemiah Thompson, the Gill Twins. They also have some really, really good linebackers. Daniel Silva's been really, really good. So for San Fernando, I think the key is gonna be keep guys healthy, which of course 
you don't have too much control over, right? Things kind of go wrong. Keep guys healthy because the depth is always going to kind of be an issue. And just play your brand of football. They're going to run the ball a lot. We know that. They've got a really good offensive line. There are questions there, kind of young guys, some new guys kind of moving in. But there's some good senior leadership up there. Blue Antonucci's done a really, really good job kind of leading that offensive line. I'm excited to see what San Fernando does here in the season. They opened with Alamany, lost to them last year in kind of a rough game. They also got Notre Dame and Canyon from Canyon Country out there on the schedule. So not afraid, not afraid to schedule the kind of the toughest opponents. And then the rematch of the D1 title game, they got Dorsey coming up in a couple weeks. Yeah, I need them to win one of those games because their league isn't very good. The Valley Mission no. League is bad, so they should pretty much roll every team. I know Reseda has a couple guys, but last year they had a couple guys too, and they San Fernando still rolled them. So I need to see early from San Fernando that they belong in this top ten because last year I remember – we kind of debated how good are they, and then we didn't really find out until they beat Dorsey because they weren't really playing too many good teams. Right. And then they came out and steamed Dorsey, and so, fine. Great team, right. great team. Built on that momentum, go out and beat Alamany, go out and beat Canyon. We'll see. Yeah, they do kind of need to make that statement because I don't think you're alone in that perception where people think, ah, it's San Fernando. They play Kennedy. Who cares, right? The Silmar game is the biggest game on their schedule. We're going to hear a lot of that kind of stuff. But the key there for San Fernando, you went and scheduled some of these good teams. Now go beat them, kind of put that perception to rest. If you can avenge that loss last year to Alamany, start the season 1-0, that would be a huge, huge boost, and it would put the rest of the city section on notice. I'm sure Casey Clausen would have nightmares for years if uh, his team lost to San Fernando, so we'll see. That's going to be an exciting one. And at number one, they were number one all last year, number one this year, it's the Narbonne Gauchos. We all know that they're known for their transfers. They brought a lot of good guys in, but really quick, I want to just talk about the guys who have been there. Steve Jenkins, a wide receiver, he returns. He was fantastic against Crenshaw in the Open Division Championship a year ago. Jonah Tonanu, wide receiver, or wide receiver, offensive lineman for them. One of the former biggest tight dudes. end, yeah. One of the biggest dudes on the football field. Tremendous, tremendous player for them. He'll be great. Jamari Boone, Juice Tapua, guys who have been there, D1 guys, they're great. So just on those guys alone, Narbonne should be number one. The question is, with these transfers, who's eligible? So we know Jake Garcia, their quarterback, he's going to be out for the first month. So Jalen Henderson, the sophomore, will quarterback them for the first month. And everyone, and myself included, kind of thought that when Garcia came over from Long Beach Poly, he would definitely be the guy. Henderson's played so well this spring and this summer that he has a chance to, even though um, Garcia has an Alabama offer. Henderson has a chance to be the guy throughout the whole year. When Garcia comes back, Henderson still might be the quarterback. That's an open competition still to this day. So that's something to watch. We know Garcia, he'll have to set out a month. Other guys, I don't know what's going on with Jawan Collins. I don't know what's going on with Mikel Wright. Jawan I don't know Collins what's, isn't on the roster. Yeah, he's not on the Max Prep roster. Mikel Wright isn't either, and everyone thinks he's, he's at Narbonne. He's to but Valencia, I think. He, so who knows what's happening with him. Aaron East, still questions about his eligibility. Looking at some other guys, th there's a million people who are in that um, situation with the city section. They're just waiting on paperwork, waiting, waiting, waiting. So we'll, we will see what happens. The guys who are ready to play, who can play, are good enough to have Narbonne number one. I just hope that a lot of these transfers can play and no one's out for a whole year or anything. I, I just want to see the best of the best play. Narbonne has a lot of guys who are waiting for eligibility, and I hope it works out for them. Yeah, boiling all of this down, Narbonne's the best team. Yeah. Like you said, even if they didn't have any of these kids transferring, even if all of those question marks turn out to be, okay, they can't play all season, Narbonne would still be the best team here in the city. Max Preps has them 24 in yep. the country. So if you're in the top 25 of high school programs in the country that includes teams like South Lake Carroll and Texas and Katy and all those really, really big programs. And modern day. And modern Bosco, day, yeah. St. John Bosco. You have made it, right? You have officially turned Narbonne into a program. Remember, Narbonne wasn't like this. This didn't always exist down there in the South Bay. And the coach is really, Coach yeah, Manny Douglas really, has done a great coach job. Coach Manny has done a really good job turning that program into something huge, an absolute powerhouse. Kids are transferring from private schools to go play at Narbonne, to play in the city section. That is the only school that is getting that kind of reversal. You think for Narbonne, they play an absolute gauntlet. They've got Corona Centennial, Long Beach Poly, and Sarah all in the first month of the season. Boy, that's going to be some good football. I know you and I were talking about the Sarah game last year. You were at it, and it was it was quite bloodbath. <laughs> it was a good game. Quite quite a lot of things going on in the stands, going on in the field. Really, really exciting, kind of fun game. But boy, they they do not shy away from playing some of the toughest teams. I don't think they go undefeated here this season. When you play Corona and Long Beach Poly or Centennial rather Poly, and then Sarah, you're going to lose a game. One 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 of those games. 
they're gonna one of those teams is gonna beat you. Key here for Narbonne, keep your head down. Once Marine League starts, I mean it's yeah. it's gonna kind of just be in cruise control. They're gonna kind of put it in neutral and roll down the hill, you know. But playoff time, man. I hope someone can kind of step up, punch them in the mouth, because Narbonne's looking like they're gonna roll to another open division title. Yeah, I agree with that. I think uh, week one though, they might not even start the year on a good note because St. Louis from Honolulu, Honolulu is really really good. They lost to him last year, so they'll remember that game. One other point with Narbonne. So last year. They won a state championship, and there's no doubting how good they were. But they got running clocked by Corona Centennial. So Corona Centennial absolutely spanked them. This year, Narbonne has them at home, and I think a lot of the guys who were on the team last year remember that game. Oh, yeah. And they uh, they want to get some revenge in this game. So I'm excited to see how that one looks because Corona Centennial, they are loaded again. They're going to be a really, really great team. Narbonne's great as well, and they lost big last year, so we'll see. We're so used to Narbonne kicking teams in the mouth. They got kicked in the mouth by this team, and we'll see what happens uh, when they play again this year. I'm hopefully going to be at that one because that's a huge, huge game. Yeah, if you remember the Centennial team from last year, I think the LA Times in their top 25 poll, they had them at three. Yeah, they were Two right outside so, Notre Dame and Bosco. Yeah, so Centennial, that's a really, really good team. They've always been a good team, kind of a program over there, kind of rivaling on the same level as like an Orange Lutheran, so a really, really good program. If Narbonne wants to make that extra step, we've already said that they've dominated the city, that they have cemented themselves as the single best public school football program here in LA. If they want to take that next step, you got running clocked by Centennial last year. The Sarah game kind of got a little chippy. Sarah, was, Sarah game they should have lost. The, the Sarah missed a chip shot field goal that would have won them the game. Right. So you kind of you've got some opportunities here. If you think you're better than Sarah, it's a rivalry game. A lot of the kids kind of yes. grew up in the same areas. You played Pop Warner with these kids. That's a statement. You go out there, you can smoke them. Sarah's a reloaded team, and they're going to be really, really good. So Narbonne, plenty of tests here early. I'm really excited to see where these kids go. Yeah, and again, it all comes down to who can play. I hope everyone can play because I want to see the best of what Narbonne has yeah, to Narbonne offer. Narbonne at full strength. But even if these guys can't for the first seven weeks, first month, or whatever it is, they're going to push for another state title. There's no doubt about it. For Alex Carr, I'm Connor Morissette. This has been the preseason LA City Section Football Podcast. From SCPI, thank you so much for joining us. We'll be here all year. I am so excited. Football season is back. I know you are as well. Absolutely. See you all season long.